Welcome to the Bentnorf Public Library's Take Home Workshop. In this workshop, we're going to be making needle felted peeps. I mean, look at these guys, how cute are they? We're gonna be making small ones like this little guy in bright yellow, but no matter what color they are, these peeps are cute. I learned how to make these peeps from Creative Bug. Creative Bug is an online service available to Bettendorf Library card holders anytime from anywhere you have internet access. It has thousands of classes, projects, and inspirations for all sorts of crafts, including these felted peeps. In your kit, you will find wool roving. So wool roving is wool that has been carded and dyed but not spun. Um, it's This particular roving has been prepared for needle felting, so it is very smooth, it has long fibers. Some roving is rougher. Um, it has, maybe it's natural colors, hasn't been dyed. And it might be rough enough that you even find bits of straw in them. I did find the occasional tiny piece even in this. Um, but for these little peeps, we want this smooth felt and we want bright colors. So we went with this more processed roving. So you'll have the bright yellow for the body of the peep and then just a tiny little bit of dark brown for the eyes and the mouth. You're going to find your needle. So in your pack, you'll have this sealed plastic straw, your needle's in there. We put it in a plastic straw for safe transportation. Just snip off the end and it'll slide right out. But please be careful, these felting needles are not short. They're three, four inches long. They're very, very sharp. And the end here is barbed. So what that means is that every time you prick the needle into the felt, and then when you pull it out again, it pushes some fibers down when you poke in and pulls some out when you pull out, those little barbs do. And so that motion, that pushing the fibers in, pulling the fibers out, tangles those fibers together, mats them down, and that is what does our faulting. These are very, very sharp. So one of our primary concerns in faulting is not to stab yourself. They will stab you, they will go in fairly deep, and it does hurt hurt really badly so and I speak from the voice of experience on that so be careful with your needle you have a foam pad in your um, kit yours is a little bit smaller than this one but the foam pad you're going to be felting on top of that so that it will protect your surface below since you're stabbing it with a sharp, sharp needle um, you can um, protect your surface below with the foam pad you don't have to use a foam pad. You could use a cutting pad. You could use a cutting board. You can use um, layers of felt, but really something like this, or a, um, they also sell professional needle felting pads that kind of look like a scrub brush that have bristles that will hold your thing up and allow the needle to pass through without damaging anything. All you need to supply is a pair of scissors. Needle felting basically meshes fibers together. It condenses them and connects them with every poke of the needle. For a peep, we're gonna start with less than a tenth of an ounce of roving. It's about three grams. We're gonna make a peep about this size. If you wanna make larger peeps, you would obviously use more roving. In your kit, you have enough for three of the small peeps, but if you wanna make one big one, same principles will apply and you can do that if you'd like. So to start, we're going to smooth out our roving so we have our cut edge and we kind of want to tuck those in, make it a little bit easier. So we're gonna roll that around. We're gonna get our pad, okay? And we're gonna take our needle and we're just going to start poking. We're gonna be very careful because we do not want that needle anywhere close to our fingers. And you'll see as you go that these fibers start to hold together. And eventually you don't even have to hold it down. So we're poking and poking. Now, 
Now, every once in a while, I'm going to peel this up and it will stick to your foam pad a little bit and that's okay. You just peel that up. You can kind of smooth it around, give it a rub in between your hands. The oils of your hands will help kind of smooth things out. And then we're going to go some more and we're just going to keep doing this until it is the density, like an even density throughout and the density that we want. We also are going to want to bring the sides in. Like this is too wide for my peep, obviously. So we're going to want to bring the sides in. So we're going to go carefully at an angle like this. And I say carefully because you want to make sure that you're poking straight in and out with your needle. You don't want to break your needle. So we're going to do that. Then we're going to flip it over and do the same thing. And that's how we can bring those sides in a little bit. Okay, so I have a rough oval shape here. It's about the width. It could be a little narrower and then we'll narrow that down a little bit more. We're gonna just keep kind of working that. You don't want your peep too dense because now we're going to start shaping it. So if you look at a peep, it's about a third, a third, a third. The head's maybe a little bit smaller. So we're gonna measure in about a third from the bottom. We're just gonna eyeball it. We're going to take our needle and because we're holding it, we're going to be super duper careful. We're going to take our time. We're going to go slow because now we're going to have to be poking pretty close to our fingers. So if you hold your fingers with your fingernails there, they can kind of guide your needle down and you might scratch your fingernails, but you won't stab your needle or stab your finger. So we're just going to poke slowly and carefully a line straight across there. And we're going to do it a few times. We want it to be a very definite line. Okay. And then we're going to peel it up. We're going to turn it over and we can see where it was because those fibers are coming out. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so that's going to be, from that seam on down, is going to be the body of the peep. So now what we need to do is we need to get that to come in a little bit, right? We need, we need to give our peep a waist. So again, very carefully, very slowly, we're going to go in from the side a little bit. Flip it over, do the same. You can hold it on the side and go in from the side like that. It is much riskier because at this stage of the game, now your fingers are exposed. So if you're gonna do that, it's a nice way to get more definition on the side, but go very slowly, very carefully, and make sure that your fingers are not in the way. These peeps are so cute, but they are not so cute if they have drops of blood on them. Okay, so now he's got a pretty well-defined waist. 
he's a little soft down here, my guy is. So I'm gonna go and I'm going to work his body a little bit more. I'm gonna make it a little bit more dense. Okay, so see right here, I have kind of a fold, a little bit of a wrinkle. If I turn him over and just go in that same spot, that's gonna even that wrinkle out because as I'm poking down, some of those fibers are getting poked through. So that sort of helps bring those back up again. Give him another little rub. going around his edge here. I'm not happy yet with how kind of loose his edges are. is going to be a fairly fat little peep, I think, but that's okay. We'll still be able to do some more shaping as we go. Um, this is a pretty forgiving craft, actually. Um, when I did some of my peeps originally, their faces were, were wrong. His eyes were really big and just not in the right position, and I was able to get those out and left a few fibers behind, so I covered it up with just a little bit of the same cut. Um, color of the this kind of marigold felted that in and then I redid his eyes so you can take parts out you can reshape you can remove okay back to our peep so there's his the, but now we're gonna do this same thing again to divide the space between his head and his ears so we're going to do a straight line So we have a head, we have his body, now his, his ears. His ears are gonna need a little shaping before they can be ears, I think. We're going to even them out a little bit. And honestly, I think I didn't proportion him right. So my guy's ears are too short. So I'm gonna take a little bit more roving. Add that on the top. And to do that, we're just gonna So we just took an extra piece and we pieced that in and filtered it in. It's got a little bit more work to do, but now my ears are going to be nice long bunny ears. So I'm going to shape this section and then I'll show you how to do the split to make the ears. Okay, so that looks much more like the right size and shape for the bunny ears. Maybe a little long, but that's okay. So to make the bunny ears, now that we have the shape roughly, 
What we're going to do is just like we did a straight line across between the body and the head and between the head and the ears, we're going to do a straight line right up between the ears. There's our straight line. And now we're going to take our scissors and we're just going to cut along that line. Just like that. So we have our cut, we have our two ears. We just need to do a little shaping. And for shaping the ears, use the edge of your pad. It's helpful. So you can bend one ear down and then you can kind of go at these ears from the side. make that cut a little less obvious. So there we have the body of a pea. Now it needs a little, little bit more work. So there's a couple things you can do. You can trim him. So this is some fairly fuzzy robing. So if you want to do some trimming around some of the edges to smooth them out a little bit, you can. You can use your scissors if you want to and nip in a little bit at these side sections, make them a little bit more defined. Again, we're gonna give him a good rub with our hands. Um, I think I might go around my edges a little bit more. He's a little soft here on the sides. His ears need to be shaped a little bit. And I'm gonna go over him all one more time to make sure that all the edges and stuff are the way I want them to be. And then we will put his eyes and nose on. Okay, I'm pretty happy with my little peep here. Now we're gonna put his eyes and nose on. The thing about peeps and their eyes and noses is that they're tiny and they're very close together and the eyes are just barely above the nose. I've tried them with bigger eyes, I've tried them spaced out. This is by far the cutest combination. So much so in that in my experiments I had to go back and redo them. So this is our brown rowing and we I gave you about this much, you need very little. So we're going to take about this much and smooth it out and we're going to twist. And if you want to lose a little water with this, it'll help. And you're going to twist it a much until it starts to curl up on itself. And we're going to use our fingernails to set how much we want, just this little bit. And that's going to be his nose. And we're going to set it there right where we want his nose, very gently as our finger is right in there, we're gonna poke. Now, I'm not poking all the way through the peep, so I could actually be doing this not on the pad, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to anyway. I don't want these fibers to come out the back of the peep. I don't want a brown spot on the back of my peep, so I'm just peeping, um, poking very gently. And you'll see now, that's, that's held on there. So now I'm going to take my scissors, I'm going to trim that off as close to the base as I can, and I have a little brown dot there. Now I'm going to felt that some more. I'm going to get down all those loose ends. I'm going to work on my shape. I want it to be a circle, and I want it to be secure. So just light taps all the way around So there's my peep nose. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing. Get a little bit of fiber. Twist it. Okay. 
and then I'm going to position my eye. Now again, just barely above it and right close in, about right there. Once you have that in there pretty good, then you trim off the excess. Oh, he looks like he's winking at you. And smooth that eye out and tuck those fibers in. And use your needle to arrange things so that he's nice, his eye is nice and round. Almost a peep. Now we're gonna do that one more time. We're gonna take a little bit of our brown, twist it. Right there. Very carefully slowly and easily because you're working so close to your fingers it's little light pokes once your eyes and nose are in place you can go over him if you need to more and even out his ears or trim him if he's too fuzzy or anything like that now these two peeps were made with roughly the same amount of roving but you'll notice they're pretty different sizes this guy is he's thinner and I can tell he's not as dense so you're going to get different results depending on how you work the roving. But that's okay because look at these. They're both really cute. These ones were all done with a different kind of wool. It was, I mean, it's still wool roving, but it was, it had shorter fibers. So they have a different fuzziness to them, but again, still really adorable. The colors, not traditional Easter colors, because this is just roving I had on hand, but I still really love them. So I think what I'm going to do is take all of my peeps and I'm going to put them in a basket on my table for our Easter display. If you make a small one like this, you could put him on a pendant for a necklace, uh, on a pin or on a barrette for a little girl's hair. How cute would that be? Just all of them. I mean, it's really hard to not end up with a cute peep on these. So we want to see your peeps. We want to see the peeps that you've made. So please share them with us on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining our take home workshop.